55, welcome to the show. I'm the pilot, I'm Timmy. We've got Big Sound Authorities felt like this. And from the pilot to the chief stewardess, John Moss. Thank you very much. Uh, no more in the charts. Thank you very much indeed. Right, tonight on the show, Roman holiday. It's been one year exactly, wasn't it? When we remember. Two, two years, years. No, two it years. was a year ago. We were in Madrid together on stage live. Yeah. Also, their singer Steve still at the bus stop. Never mind. Ladies and gentlemen, Roman holiday. Thank you. <laughs> Great, that's Roman Holiday, one foot back on your door. And it's a good new change of style for Roman Holiday. In fact, it's two years to the day since they did their very first number, Stand By, and their television debut was here on ORS 83. That was two years ago. So good luck to them. They're off to Japan very shortly to go and do some more songs over there. But now it's time for the mega quiz. It's the phoning part of the competition. All you have to do is look at this face we're going to show you, which we've disguised in various ways as we normally do. And Sue, if you show us the picture, please, let's have a look and see what we've got down here. Around one of the quiz looks like this. Nothing at all there. It's just a blue, splodgy mess. 
Who's that? Ah! And we get to see a face that's a nose there! And the third picture, well, if you know who that is and you jolly well should do, then you pick up your telephone like this and you dial this number. You dial 061-814-3222. And you speak to all these people here and you say, I know who that is! And if you do know the answer and you get it right, then, of course, you can be a winner. Angela, there's your phone. You're taking it now. OK. Right, John, it's your turn. Right, good evening. This is my first guest. This is Toby G. Mott from the Grey Organisation. Good evening. Hello, John. How are you? Right, first of all, what exactly is the Grey Organisation? Uh, the Grey Organisation is a body of free artists comprising of myself, Daniel and Paul, who met in the Medici Chapel in Florence, That's Italy. Italy. Right. And, uh, and there we met, chatted and formed the Grey Organisation. And you're based in London? Yeah, East London. Well, we're in Manchester now. Is it, is, ex is it exclusive to London, or is it like a nationwide thing? No, uh, it's uh, international. Oh, God, I'm pleased to about that. So what exactly, you know, what's it all about? I mean, what are your aims? You must have certain aims being an organisation. Our aims are to form a body of uh, young artists to overthrow the uh, stale art establishment in Britain. I'm all for that. And uh, put a new young force in there. Yeah, art is always considered very highbrow. I mean, do you think the, uh, everybody in the audience, do, could they join the Grey Organisation? Can they relate to it? Is um, it relevant? I wouldn't know if they could all join, but I'm certain uh, some of them could join. Would they be welcome to join? Uh, some of them, if they had the, um, the ideas uh, that we hold, um, yes. Good, right. Well, um, I think we should see some slides now. Where are they? Yeah. Right, what's this one? Uh, this one is from our second series, and it's Birth. The second series is called Just the Life. Yeah, this is lovely. This is uh, all three of you. And this, this is, is alive yeah. and awake. Yeah. And uh, this one's alive and asleep. Yes. And this is death. Ah, oh, how come death's the most colourful one? Uh, <laughs> maybe that's the liberating one. Right. Okay. Um, you've been called art terrorists by the media. Um, yes, we have. That always comes up means just throwing bombs at the Tate Gallery, but I'm sure it doesn't mean that. Uh, no, we threw a picture into the International Contemporary Art Fair in London um, <laughs> That's without being invited Yeah, and um, thus provoked a certain amount of So reaction. it's a bit like going to a Duran Duran concert and kicking Simon Le Bon off stage and singing your own songs. Absolutely, and maybe that sounds killing the audience. sounds good to me, kids. I don't know about that. Um, you've, uh, well, don't, don't be mean. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's Captain Scarlet. Yes, let's be. Uh, thank you, Toby. Hang on, I think we got something going on here. Uh, it was very entertaining. <laughs> Captain Scarlet, uh, 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 explain. No, I'll, I'll handle this, right? Right, from the Grey Organisation, as you'll see, to the very colourful Captain Scarlet. What's all this about? Is this serious? Uh, yes, it is. I mean, we're a, a mime organisation called Mime Theatre Project, and we've put Thunderbirds and Captain Scarlet live on stage for the first time ever. Well, that is amazing. Um, mime? How can you mime Captain Scarlet? I mean, well, how can you mime <laughs> Thunderbirds? <laughs> well, we use our techniques in mime to actually do the puppet walk, as you just saw, yeah. and also to create the whole illusion and colour and excitement of the series. Because, of course, mime isn't just silent, as most people think, you know. Well, no, I mean, I always thought mime was not saying anything and going... Man in a glass box. That's right, box. doing gla glass walls and all that stuff. Yeah. But you know, if you, that's only Marcel Marceau that's really created that tradition. Quite. But if you look back through mime, you know, mime really means to imitate. So well, I think we I'm, imitate the I world. I feel like the Grey Organisation. See, mime is always considered rather hybrid. Anybody here like mime? Seen a mime show, anyone? Oh, a few people have, anyway. And uh, obviously should. this isn't so highbrow being Captain Scarlet, is it? Absolutely. Well, so you're going to bring mime to the people? That's right. I mean, hopefully people will come and see the show because they've seen Thunderbirds and Captain Scarlet and they remember them. Right. And then they'll see Mime as well at the same time. Because, you know, Mime is very a accessible. Branch you know. of the uh, Grey Organisation. Well, yeah, maybe. <laughs> no. You never know. You know. <laughs> do you do but anything uh, else apart from Captain Scarlet? Yes, absolutely. And I have a little something here. Hang on. What is it? <laughs> uh, this is, uh, this yeah. is Thunderbird 1. We wear this um, on my head like this. We also have uh, Thunderbird 2, <laughs> with little Must palm trees and so on, and we, <laughs> we fly the models around. Give a round of applause, that's brilliant. <laughs> All right, thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love that. OK, let's turn our attention to Pete Wiley now, the big mouth from Wah. We sent him out with a camera to Liverpool, to Liverpool to go and do a report on his hometown. This is Wiley in Liverpool.
The Guardian had this little article in saying that of so many scouts interviewed, 70% of them wanted to leave, get out of Liverpool as soon as they could and make fresh starts elsewhere. Now, I'm sure there are some people who want to do that, and there are obviously some who will have to do that. I mean, Frankie goes to Hollywood, couldn't have happened like, like they did from Liverpool. Uh, but I know most of the scouts I know, most of the people I talk to in Liverpool, wouldn't leave Liverpool for the world. They're the proudest, most chauvinistic people in the country, you know. So uh, I wrote this, like, come back as an answer to it. To all them people who were supposedly running away, saying, come back, you know, and, and make Liverpool strong by staying here and doing something about the problems, not just ducking out and running away. Oh, look at all these now walking up to embarrass me. That's terrible, that. Typical scousers, you can't resist the chance to get in a film. In terms of the Liverpool thing, this comment, Liverpool is the pool of life, is a very important key, as you'll find. Uh, this building used to be the Armadillo Tea Rooms, which moved there now since you got a few bob and the tourists come in to throw them money. The almost legendary Liverpool scene began in this building with a pot of tea, three tea bags and warm-ups all afternoon. Echo and the bunny men, uh, teardrop explodes, or castle manoeuvres even when their mums would let them over from over the water. We'd arrive here and we'd drink tea all day and form our plans for world greatness. On our right, we have a new piece of uh, social scandal, the legendary John Lennon bar. This place, the John Lennon bar, where these nice people are about to enter, will not let people in wearing jeans or looking scruffy, so in fact the John Lennon bar wouldn't let John Lennon in. Quite interesting piece of information there. Huh? You have a nice lady. Oh, I know, she, oh, oh, you, she used to do the cloakroom in this building, this girl. Yes, I'm, I'm going to talk about black. this, please. I was still a black. She's the still a blacker than you. Wave, you understand. Don't know where that makes me, though. Yeah, See you later. Great, making myself famous, as you do. This, on the other hand, the, uh, the tourist room. This is actually part of a YTS scheme. Obviously, when you're shoplifting in Liverpool, you get fed up with going to Woolworths. And if you go to Chester, it's a different kind of shops, or you go to somewhere posh. So they built this to help lads with stage smash and grab raids, all on a £30 a week wage from the government. What else have we got here? Now, this place. I could tell you things about this place. This, despite it saying the cavern, wasn't actually the cavern until after the Beatles had all gone. But in here, what was it, October the 1st, 1976, this opened as Eric's. Uh, the Stranglers played for 60 pence. They all had long hair in them days. And we used to come down and get wellied in there and have sex in the toilets, which is not done these days, of course, in these days the fabulous Duran Duran. This other grotto we're about to uh, we see is where the cavern actually started. It's been reopened as a, like a tacky wine, but when they actually dug down and reopened the cavern, the, uh, what was it? They found a pool of uh, water underneath, which is either some stinking sewer or some people think the pool of life. As I mentioned earlier, this is continuity. The little sign down there, have we been watching? This is important. Um, what can I tell you? If you've flown 4,000 miles to see the cabin, would you want to come see a tacky wine bar? Not me. <laughs> so where can an international jet-setting celebrity like me good self take his public on a night out? I've chosen to bring you to Riot Torn Toxter for a once-only televised performance. Come this way. This Cinema Verite. The Bank House. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to, see, to meet my family, my group, my public, my very good friends. And the ordinary Liverpool people. These so-called down and outs. Well, let me tell you, these are some of the finest people on the air. Margaret Thatcher said, these people are the salt of the air. Throw them on the road when it snows. They should be in cellars. Let me tell you, these people will make you laugh. They'll make you cry. But that is life. Come this way. I'm not doing any more now, I'm getting this down. <laughs> Scallies. I could have stayed round and chatted a little longer about my expensive connections with the likes of Frankie Goes to Hollywood here. I'd like to meet Frankie, Holly, Paul, the lads. Buddy Holly goes to Frankie Wood. But instead, I've chosen 
to get back that end of the bar, give it loads of this. Watch the group. You, meanwhile, can go and watch the guest present to get things wrong. Nice to see you. Oh, all right, all right. Very funny piece. I'm not going to get this wrong. Last time I was in Liverpool, I had my leather jacket nicked, and it could have been by this man. It's Pete Burns and Dead or Alive. That's Dead or Alive and you spin me around like a record. Well, you might have heard the name New Group Time. It's uh, spelt like this. They've been making quite a lot of attention for themselves with some clever gimmicks, including soap, smelt like this. What's this? Badges, spelt like these. And uh, dictionaries to make sure that you can spell, spell like this. Very good, right. You also got belts as well, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah, and you've got, what's the other thing you've got? Uh, Cards, yeah, and you've got uh, underwears felt like this and stuff. A chocolate melt like this. Yeah, yeah. So you can look up the word hit actually. Oh, is that right? That's right. Is that what you're going to have? That's with what it? we're going to have. Right. With okay. It. Let's do a few details about this because I've got now personal file about you two. Let's start with you, Russell. Now, first of all, uh, it says down here: previous jobs, built three rigs of the largest land-based oil field in Europe. Yes, that's right. Where? In which farm? Corfe Castle, Dorset. And how long does that take? Uh, it took a long time actually, it took about a year, this is right, yes. What's your weekend job? Uh, I play in a band called really? Spell Like This. You're that's kidding. Right. No. no. Uh, what's this? Previous bands, The Fix, The Truth, Gino Washington Band. Gino Washington, that's right. Nickname Snowy and Rusty. And what's this stuff down here? True Confession, Shooting My Sister in the Leg at 12. That's right, I'm, I'm really sorry Susan, I was aiming for your head. 
<laughs> Lee, right, let's have a yeah. look at you. It's, it says down here, uh, you're a vegetarian. No, that's not true. Well, that's what it says here, and you've signed me. this, this is you. No, that's not me. Isn't it? No, well, it's well, the other guy, that's the singer in the band. Oh, well, why that's is Lee here? Well, he's got flu. He's quite ill. I see, well, where... Have I got the wrong one here? Yeah, oh, sorry, one. this is you. I'm thinking about... Look, picture there. It says here, uh, what have you got? Previous job, driver and a slave. Slave, right. I did actually work for a company that treated me rather like a slave. Yeah. And you've also, a single, it's got a disgusting sleeve in here, which has been banned, hasn't disgusting it? Disgusting hell. But look, the problem is you can't even get into the record without tearing the sleeve apart like this. And when you get this, what you get, you get Contract of the Heart. Here's the video. <laughs> Well, that's uh, spelt like this. That's uh, Contract of the Heart, and here are some cards. A delt like this. OK, good luck with the single. And uh, next time, you know, you don't need all the gimmicks. The music's good enough as it is. Winners, uh, the answer to the competition. What was the answer to the competition? Let's show us the picture, will you, Sue? Who's that? Who is it? Who what? That there. Who's that look like? Oh, John Lennon. No, it's not John Lennon. It's Julian. Honestly, where do you get these people? Right, winners. Sally Reid from Halifax, Mark Tallett from Burton-on-Trent, Jackie Thornley from Worcester, David Patrick from Fife, and Alison Sanford of Swansea. So congratulations, you're all winning prizes. <laughs> right, let's get on with, um, what was it going to do now? What do you want, horoscopes? Horoscopes. Let's have a look and see what we got. This is the week ahead for Geminis. Okay, because we're on to Geminis this week. An exciting weekend socially, as long as you're seen in the right places. Where are they? Uh, then gather your energies as you're moving towards a critical day on Thursday when your best effort will be needed to clear up a serious misunderstanding. Success in dealing with this will open a new phase in your career. Are you Gemini's, by the way, boys? Oh, I'm sorry, we got the wrong one there. OK, let's have a look at famous Gemini's. They include John Taylor, um, Paul McCartney, Alison Moyer. In fact, John Taylor, uh, no, Paul McCartney and Alison Moyer have the same birthday, except they're 19 years apart. Alison Moyer doesn't look 19 years old, does she? OK, other famous uh, Geminis include Barry Manilow, except that while well, he's a Gemini whose nose is a Taurus, uh, Nick Rhodes, Vince Clark, Francis Rossi, Steve Strange, and two members of the Smiths, Mike Joyce and Morrissey, who are playing a bit later. And uh, also Boy George, a Gemini. It's one or two Geminis down here, I think. Well, it must be. It says Gemin. Hi. Yeah, are you Geminis? No. What? No. But Gemini's are supposed to be twins, aren't they? You're twins, aren't you? Have we got any Gemini's here at all? Yeah, is this a Gemini? Send him through. Let's have a look at the state of you then. Okay, this is Gemini's are clever, crafty, witty, and charming, and their tongues are their most active organs. Yes, that is a Gemini, okay. Uh, they look shifty and they find it hard to stand still. Are you a Gemini? You are? Oh, good. Well, this will be just for you, then. Uh, you're very infuriating, and but you're never boring. Is that you? Right, good. And uh, you suffer from adolescent pangs, usually until you're about 75. And actually, you can just see a little spot on the left side of your nose there, so if you'd like to go and pick it now. OK? Good. Listen, how much of these Gemini stuff refers to uh, George, John? Yeah. John? Sorry, say that again. I wasn't listening. I was engrossed in a conversation about being an actor. Help. <laughs> no, listen, we were talking about uh, George being oh, a George Gemini. George being a Gemini. Yeah, yeah, he's a definite Gemini. In fact, I'm stunned by the likeness. Especially the um, clever, Shifty. crafty, witty and charming. Yes. Sounds like me. Or you're maybe not. You're not a Gemini. No, I'm not. I'm a Virgo, actually. Do I, do I look like a Virgo? Does he look like a Virgo? 
<laughs> We've got a fellow over here who's uh, got some words of wisdom for you, uh, John, about becoming an actor, because I know this is one of your secret ambitions, to become right, an actor. I've got four minutes to learn now. John Moss, this is your life. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. John, they tell me you're going to be an actor. Uh, apparently so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Now, you see, one of Thank my very much. best pupils is Timmy there. Yeah. It's taken me years. You, you don't think he looks like that, really, do you? Or sounds like that? Was it worth it? I mean, could, well, I sometimes wonder, but, I mean, could anybody look and sound like that naturally? So, no, if you really. want to be an actor, there is hope. Right. But, but <laughs> seriously, you're really going to you're go in for this? Yeah, I'm in for it, yeah. And what are you going to do? Oh, what am I going to do? Well, I've been offered a few parts, like, um, you know, the gang leader, etc. But I don't really fancy that very much. I'd rather do a, a 30 second role in an amazing film mm -hmm. and, um, and be wonderful, which is probably all I could actually cope with, seeing I can't remember more than about four words. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we've got about... Uh, well, I've actually been offered in America quite a few. Really? Yeah. Uh, we've got about a couple of minutes now to make you into a world-famous actor. Well, now, that sounds good to me. That's not know. easy by any standard. You know, the Royal Academy takes a little bit longer than two minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, we'll start at the beginning. Now, if you're going to be an actor, the first thing you've got to do is to not act. Right. Clear? You've got to actually become the person that you're going to act. Right. Right? Okay. There's no acting at all. You're really... Now, take a drunk. Right. Now, if I'm playing a drunk, what I try to do is try to appear sober. You defocus de the eyes, <laughs> and what, what you're trying to, trying to do is persuade the other person that you're not drunk at all. <laughs> now, I I'm want not, you I'm to... I'm not drunk. No, I'm not drunk. Mm. In, invite... You're in, not drunk. In, I'm, not, I'm not drunk. In, in, invite me then now. Go on, well, have, well, have well, a drink. I promise would I won't you accept. Would like to have a drink with me? Because uh, I really <laughs> need one. Pretty good. Hey. How about the yeah. Thank you. And next, Macbeth. My, mine's a gin and tonic, actually. <laughs> yes, now, if you're going to act in this country, yeah. you're going to have to play a lot of regional parts. So let's, I mean, what part of the world are you from, London? London, yeah. We've all got problems. Wandsworth, actually. Okay, John, fair enough. Well, basically, you're down there, then. That's sort of yeah. negative words. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, now, let's assume that you're going to have to play the part of a Geordie. Okay? All right, man. Oh, not bad. Not bad, not bad all, for man. starters, Petal. Now, then, what I'm going to do, <laughs> I'm going to give you a couple of words that'll get you into being a Geordie. Right, OK? I've got some Geordie friends, actually, so be careful. Well, I promise we'll not offend well, them. Well, uh, you know. No, the first one is a phrase. It's the date, in fact. I want you to say it to me, May the 8th. May the 8th. That's it, you're a Geordie. Hey! <laughs> Locomotive. <laughs> Locomotive, you've been on the train. Why, that's grand. Now we say, gun along the Scotswood Road. Ga what? Gunning along the Scotswood Road. Gunning along the Scotswood Road. That's right, you're a Geordie. Simple as that. And Silly, you innit? <laughs> you, you've, you've also you've also got to be able to play yeah. people of all ages. Okay. Now it's a sad fact you may not like to think about this at the moment, John. But when you get older, your teeth are going to fall out. Yeah. Okay. You warn me about this. That's one. right. I know. So I want you now to imagine you've got no teeth at all. No, no, that's right. Now the thing is, play it now without any teeth at all. Yeah. Right? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> now what are you going to do? Pretend you've got no teeth on your lips. I can't believe this. They're going to be at it all night. The way they're going. That's lip, amazing. Lip, hey, 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 what, 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 what? Johnny, we haven't got, we haven't got to walk around with a string on my head yet. Or the books on the head or anything. Stop it. Do I have to use his mic all the time? Right, Johnny Slong, here's her band to watch. She's been out. David Bellamy. I'm looking for QAX, which are a band, believe it or not, who are from the Wolverhampton area. I said I'd meet them here in this hot house, but I've got a feeling they're outside in the snow. If they are, I'd kill them anyway. I'm going to carry on looking. The problem with working with uh, arty sadist directors is that they have you sitting in places like this. It's freezing, isn't it, Steve? Oh, that's great. Tell me something about QAX. I mean, how long have you three been together? Um, just over two years now. Uh, just over two years. Most of the time has been spent writing um, in preparation for looking for a record deal. So we've got about 60 songs. What happened though prior to that? I mean, had you all come from different bands? Um, the two girls had never been in a band before. And um, I'd been in several bands and I'd never worked. I'd always worked with blokes and I thought I'd try working with girls for a change. <laughs> Has neither of you had uh, ever been in a band before? What was it like? I think you know all those blokes. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, yeah, it was great actually. Terrific. We settled in, I think, pretty well. I was really nervous, you know, so I didn't think I'd get it. But um, 
like with Jackie playing uh, keyboards as well. He thought we were too good to pass up. Jackie, you're responsible for the name QAX, aren't you? Which yeah. is, apparently is a secret, but I want you to reveal all. Well, it's just, it's just a cryptic anagram, and you have to figure it out for yourself. Well, basically. as I'm probably very, very thick, what does QAX mean? <laughs> well, whatever you want it to mean, basically. We write together and we write separately, mm. but the most commercial stuff has come when we all work together in the rehearsal room. What are your influences? My influences? I don't think I've got many. Um, the musicians who I'd listen to now are like... Um, Robert Palmer, um, oh, that black guy, Herbie Hancock, <laughs> he's really good. But um, I don't listen to much music, probably because I can't afford any record. <laughs> no, we're into really meaty music. Rock stars. <laughs> no, no. QAX, you saw three of them on the film. Now they're joined by a drummer. Welcome in the studio, please. QAX.
Well, that was QAX and Driving Heart, and now it's time for the results of the writing competition a couple of weeks ago before Nick Kershaw. And the results, Sue, let's have a look at the pictures. Yes, who is this? Peter Powell. Easy one on the first one. Second one was Nick Haywood. And the third one, disguised behind the orange splurge, was Howard Jones. So congratulations to all those people that got it right. Here is the BBC Ben, and here is Lou, who will take it round. The five most exciting and interesting people here in the BBC who will draw out the winners. This is uh, Joy, her best side, you notice, and uh, I'm terribly sorry about this. We've been practicing this all afternoon. They're still having problems here. And the second prize, uh, come along now, really, honestly, we can't do anything about the star pairs. Nothing to do with me. And uh, Jill has actually put a, especially put on her red watch for this, but she still draws it out with the other hand. Honestly, behave yourselves. This is a live program here. Now, come on, let's get this right. Right, Lou, give us the five winners, please. Who okay, are they? A. Connolly from Farnborough. Okay, congratulations. A. Connolly. C. W. Parks from uh, Whitstable. Donna. Donna. Not the Donna McCulloch from Belfast. Belfast. Donna, well done. Sorry. Sandra Bryant from Darlington. Yes, and finally... Julie Lovett from Flixton. So congratulations, well done. You all win prizes, including T-shirts like this, which Lou will specially wear before we send out, won't you, Lou? Absolutely. Great, it's lovely. OK, John, it's your turn. Let's go downstairs. Thank you. First of all, I apologise for the smoke. Right, I must be the luckiest man in the house because I'm now going to interview Julie Hadwin from the Big Sound Authority. Thank Good you, evening. <laughs> Thank you, John. <laughs> Thank you. First of all, first of all, I want to congratulate you on the success of your single. Well done. Now listen, um, most people think when a band has a hit single first time round, etc., that it just happened for them. They never think they've been together for a long time. Did you have to work hard for it? You've been, how long have you been together? We've been together for about a year and a half now. Yeah. And uh, it's been sort of hard slog for the last year, working in loads and loads of clubs and things, you know, sort of getting the music side of it together and also working out performance and stuff like that. Right. When we started Culture Club, people said, oh, you know, you, you, you're really lucky to have a hit single straight away. And I said, no, we've been working for three years, my friend, I'll tell you, you know. Yeah, you can give me some advice, John. <laughs> yeah, so um, you're playing in Leeds tonight, by the way, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, Leeds tonight, Leeds Poly. 10.30, so That's you've got right. a big rush back, haven't That's you? That's right, yeah. Also, um, when you're starting, do you find that you get a lot of uh, interest from record labels, but it's very hard to know which one to go with, because they offer you all sorts of uh, goodies and everything. But you have to decide the most sympathetic one. Yeah, that's it. The one that um, MCA really sort of go along with our ideas, you know. They yeah. sort of follow everything we want to do. And as we know what we want to do, it's sort of good for us. That's good. They it's give great. you artistic freedom, oh, as yeah. they say. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, well, we went with Virgin Records for the same reason. We offered a lot of deals, but um, eventually we decided on Virgin because they uh, really understood us, really? as we say. Hello, Timmy. Hi. Can I help you? Yeah, go, 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 you just go. want to get in on the act here, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> Has there been any um, interest from America yet? Because the Big Sound Authority, I've noticed, don't use any machines. No drum machines, no synths or anything. Yeah, apparently we have had quite a lot of interest from America. And we will be doing a couple of showcase gigs over there later in the year. Um, Music-wise, um, it's sort of intentional that we don't use a lot of synth machines and stuff like that, you know, drum Yeah, I noticed that. Jolly good as well. And it's about time yeah. we got back to real music, don't That's you? That's it, yeah. The heart and soul of it. Um, well, Timmy? Yes. I think That's about it. What are you doing next, by the way? Hold it, hold it. What are you doing next? That's what I want to know. After this tour. Well, next we're going to, um, we're coming back and we're going to start recording a couple of tracks for our album. And then we'll be going off to Europe to promote this house over there. Right, well, good luck to you. Thank you very Big much. Big round of applause, everyone, and good luck to you in the future. Thanks, Thanks for coming. Thank you, Julie. Well done, John. I, I thought you were going to ask you some questions. No, 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 no. I was going to get to the, uh, the, Round three, the next round of the uh, mega quiz, and okay. this is the writing part of the competition, OK? So if you look at is. these pictures coming up now, you'll see we've altered these various faces, and if you get them correct, then we will uh, send you prizes. Let's have a look and see what we've got. Right, first one, right. what does that so look look like to you? Uh, looks like the... Yes, looks I like thought so, infrared map of Iceland. Does it? No. Right. Any clearer now? It's definitely um, birthed by the Grey organisation. And the second... <laughs> the second face... <laughs> This is, um... Uh... Yeah, I think that so, That looks too. like, um... Looks like Julie. Looks nothing at all like Julie. Has she got eyes like that? Uh... Uh, now you've really got to start putting it now, haven't you? Third one. OK, this is, uh, actually, in fact, this is, um... A billiard board. You can see from the green colour there. Actually, it actually looks like Mondrian, for all you who are into art here, OK? Really? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Oh, that's Limal. <laughs> oh, sorry, oh, I'm not supposed to say that. Sorry. Three pictures, three names. I want them in order, please. One, two, and three with your name, your address, <laughs> and your telephone number. And you send them to Mega Quiz, ORS 85, PO Box 27, Manchester. That's ORS 85, PO Box 27, Manchester. Are you sure? <laughs> no, I'm definitely sure. He doesn't sure. know. Right, OK, go carry on. Introduce them. Go on, introduce them. Introduce who? Introduce them. They're there. The best band in the world. Listen, come here. Come here. This 
It's the best band in the world. They're my favourites. Nothing to say, ladies and gentlemen, the Smiths. Right, that is almost the end, and I'm going to say goodbye to everyone now. Toby, goodbye. Thanks very much indeed, and good luck with the great organisation. Julie, good luck, you're wonderful. Peter, I've been offered four big film contracts in the last half an hour. Thank the you best of luck for with it. Yeah. And Andy, thank you very much indeed. By the way, when is your show on? Um, well, we're in Guildford next week, next Tuesday, and then uh, we're in London in April, and Liverpool in April, and then we're right. here in Manchester in May. Be there, or be square. <laughs> and now... Hang on. Got to what? tell you who's oh. on next week. Oh. What? Wait, just wait a minute. Oh, wait no, a minute. no, 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 wait no. Wait a second. No, no, no. Is, next week, Dave Garn's presenting. Colourfield are uh, playing this music. Also, Dark City are in, The Farmer's Boys, Owen Paul, and Janice will be here in the studio as well. And you know, you've still got that spot on the edge of your face there. Right. John. Right, this next number needs no formal introduction, but I will read you a quote from George Bernard Shaw of Man and Superman. He who can, does. He who cannot, teaches. The Smiths. <laughs>
In Whistle Test on Tuesday, the Ramones play live and the Roaring Boys make their first TV appearance. That's next Tuesday at 7 o'clock. Starting on Sunday, favourite things in which Roy Plumley meets some well-known people in their homes and discovers what gives them the greatest pleasure in life. Phil Drabble enjoys his hand-reared animals. Isn't that lovely? Oh, it's nice to see. Les Dawson introduces him to the pleasures of Blackpool. Ian Botham remembers the Red Arrows. He gave me a, uh, a model up there, uh, a memento uh, for the day. Unfortunately, they couldn't manage to give me one of the real ones, but <laughs> that was... Uh, <laughs> oh, they take up a lot of room. <laughs> well, I could have found somewhere for it, I'm sure. Lady Antonia Fraser <laughs> loves Covent Garden. Thank you very much. I always seem to be eating Thank and drinking you. in this program. Well, well, I think everyone should have a hobby. <laughs> and Lord Tony Pandy has a thing about hymns. We always have five hymns. I like five hymns. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know you Anglicans. <laughs> You're satisfied with two. <laughs> And to start the series, Beryl Reed's Riverside Cottage at Windsor, with its ten feline familiars. They're all little things that have needed homes. And...